Hello everyone, welcome back to the Second Circle, a Helltaker fan game. Let's go ahead and continue. Uh, today, we're going to be going with Zazzle and Cerberus, I think. Yeah, let's do that. After your debacle at the museum, Azazel sequesters herself to your room for days on end. And if it weren't for her communal meal times, you wouldn't see her at all. Although she seems relatively composed during breakfast and dinner, her solitude at all other times of the day, while not entirely abnormal, concerns you. The museum was the perfect place for her to gather up a lot of information for her thesis in a relatively short amount of time, after all. But, now that she's been banned, you're worried that she isn't taking things all too well. So, one day you decide to check in with the curious angel. You knock at her door, unsure what to expect. Come in! But the Zazzle sounds just as chipper as ever. Hey, it's just me. I... Huzzah! Mr. Taker! He came at the perfect time! I just finished sorting through and organizing all my notes from the museum. You glance aside and see seven neat piles of notes stacked precariously atop of Zazzle's desk. So that's what you've been doing up here all this time. Yep. Thanks to our trip to the museum, I think I'll be able to shorten the time it'll take me to finish my thesis by about a decade. A decade? That's... a lot. Mm -hmm. Aren't you upset that we can't go back? Mm, a little. But that's okay. I'm just happy I was able to get what information I got. Thanks to you, I'll be able to finish my thesis 0.00001% quicker. That's certainly good to hear. So, what do you say we take a bit of a break to celebrate? Hmm. That depends. What sort of break did you have in mind? Well, there's an ice cream car in the park that I hear just expand their selection to 16 flavors. I was thinking we could go there and maybe sample all of them. Perhaps we can even think about it as research for a thesis. I'm sure you'll need a vasection on frozen trees sooner or later, right? At your suggestion, Azazel's eyes become as wide as saucers. She hurriedly jots something down in a notebook before leaping to her feet. The angel dashes through a door, grabbing you by the arm on her way out. Don't just sit there, Mr. Taker. There's research to be done. She all but drags you down the stairs. You just barely manage to snag at your keys off the hook by your front door as you are shoved outside. At your back, you catch the sound of someone shouting after you. What in the... Why are you off to in such a hurry? Ice cream! Ah. Uh, if they have a coffee flavor, you better bring me a scoop. You turn to respond but find that the door has already slammed shut behind you. Looking ahead, you see that Zazz is already sitting in the passenger seat, her face pressed firmly against the window. Sighing, you hop behind the wheel. Soon, the engine roars to life and you set your sights for the park. The very moment you pull in, Zazz hops on and draws her notebook from the belt like some sort of action hero. You then lead the way forward until you hear the ice cream cart saw jingle calling out to you. Ah, there we are. With the Zazzle bouncing at your heels, you approach the man at the car. Lev? I thought you were tired. The old man sighs and looks at you with a weird expression hidden beneath his artificially cheerful customer service mask. Ah, I wish, my friend. Fortunately, my days here are numbered. Oh? I had my replacement not too long ago. She's an odd one, sure, but she'll do. Is it Abby? I bet it's Abby. 
In any case, what can I get you guys today? First two scoops are on me. He glanced back at his asshole. The angel returns his look with one of wide-eyed anticipation. Well, take one of everything, love. Though the old man raises an eyebrow, he doesn't protest. Coming right up. With that, he began scooping out dollops of ice cream into cones and handing it to you in his asshole. As you are watching the man dole out ice cream, you feel a weight at your back. You can't shake the feeling that you are being spied upon. But when you turn around to look, you see nothing but an empty park. It doesn't like take long before your arms fill up with ice cream. Fortunately, love is kind enough to provide you with a solution for such a problem. The form of a cardboard tray which holds all your cones for you. True this word, you get the first two scoops for free. Sally, you had to pay for the other 14. After carving up the cash, you and Azazel scout out a nice bench where you can sit and sample all the flavors. As you are treating yourself to a hearty sample of the mint chocolate chip, the sensation of being watched returns. This time, however, you turn to find the source and are still to discover a familiar stout little man standing directly behind you. What the hell? You nearly drop your tray of ice creams as you leap from your seat. Azazel, who had been taking over ice creams viscosity, follows your gaze and, upon discarding the source of her fright, screams as well. This garden of the Renaissance exhibit. He has come to exact his revenge. Save the ice cream. Just as it looks like Azazel is going to flee, the man interjects. Please, please, I mean you no harm. I only ask that you hear me out. You and Azazel exchange a hesitant glance. Hmm. Alright. I came to apologize for chasing you out of the museum the other day. Wait, so you sought us out? How did you find us? That is not important. I think it's pretty important. What is important is that you were right, miss. I was? Yes. And so I was wrong to shout at you the way that I did. But I implore you to understand my position in the matter. The claim you made was... Damning. Something like that can ruin a reputation in an instant. Oh. And with the museum struggling for funding as it is... I desperately wanted to brush off your accusation as baseless. But I just couldn't bring myself to ignore it. Your claim needled into my mind to such a degree that I found myself unable to sleep at night. And perhaps that is because I, too, had my doubts regarding the validity of some of those pieces. Quite a handful of them are so rare that I wonder how I managed to get my hands on them. But that is neither here nor there. What am I trying to say is that my curiosity got the better of me. And so I hired a forensic art specialist to suss out the truth for the matter. I thought that hearing it from an expert would put my anxious mind at ease. However, much to my chagrin, she confirmed right away that the beast in question was a forgery. And this the tearful man puts his face in his hands and begins to quietly sob. What am I to do now? Not sure what to say, you look to Zazzle. The angel frowns, but sits next to the man and begins to pat him on the back. What? Would you like some ice cream? Azazel offers the man and her cone. Touched by a gesture, the curator smiles in spite of his tears and graciously accepts the frozen treat. But, thank you. I wish there was some more we could do. Well, if you'll permit me, there's a little more to this story. There is? Indeed. After hearing from the forensic specialist, I grew suspicious. I was certain that I had that piece inspected before approving it for the gallery. So I decided to dig out my old records, thinking that I must have missed something. But when I found the certification for that piece... 
It wasn't a forgery when you got it, was it? Precisely. Hmm. Now that is a conundrum. Do you think Sonic could have stolen the original? And replaced it with a fake? I have my suspicions. But no way to prove them correct. As I said before, the museum's funding is tremulous at late at best. I'm ashamed to admit that I dug into last of our budget just to try that specialist to verify the validity, or lack thereof rather, for just the one piece. Though I believe that some of the other paintings may have been stolen as well. I am at the end of my rope. Without the money, I cannot prove those beliefs to be correct. And I'm afraid that if I were to call the authorities, the news would paint me as a charlatan who deals in fakes. I cannot have that happen. So, you were wondering if we could help you figure out which of your pieces were fakes. Yes. Though you feel a certain amount of sympathy for the art curator's plight, since the responsibility of sleuthing out forgeries falls upon Azaz's shoulders, the honest is on her to accept or deny the request. As such, you look to the angel to see what is she plans to do. From the looks in Azaz's eyes, you can tell that her heart aches for the man just as much as yours does. Before she can open her mouth to accept his request, however, the curator bursts into tears. The result can just barely make out his pleas. I have little that I can offer in return, and I wouldn't blame you for saying no after how much I treated you thus far. But please, I beg you to lend me your charity key just this once and I promise I will repay it in kind. Taken aback by the man's sorrow, Azazel looks to you for affirmation. With a nod, you agree, silently tell the poor curator. Mr. Curator, please don't cry. We will help you. All at once, the sobbing stops, and the man looks up to Azazel with a look of hope. Do you mean that? We do. We won't be able to come today, but we'll make sure time to be there soon. Hearing this, the curator leaps to his feet and hurries to shake your hand. Though tears still glisten at the corners of his eyes, the radiance of his joy quickly dries them away. Any time will do, really. Just give me a call when you're in the way, and I will shut down the exhibit for you both. Will do. I wish there was something I could do in return. But the only thing in my power to offer is a first look at all new exhibits before they are output on the museum floor. Ah. Uh. Typically, this is a privilege reserved for historians and researchers, but would that be something you are interested in? He glanced over the curator's shoulder, as as his eyes are gleaming with excitement. Yeah, I think we'd like that very much. I'm glad to hear it. I look forward to your call. And with that, the curator departs. As you watch him leave, you cannot help but notice a certain spring in his step. Turning back to Zazzle, still awestruck by the opportunity that has fallen nearly into your laps, you let out a sigh. It's getting late. Shouldn't we be heading home too? Can we go to the museum tomorrow? Hmm, we'll see. Before leaving the park, you stop by at Lev's ice cream stand and pick up a scoop of coffee ice cream for Panda Monica. With renewed vigor, you and Zazzo find yourselves thrust into an all-new adventure. And as you look at the angel sitting next to you, it is difficult to imagine sharing in this particular adventure with anyone else. Ah, oh, hell, whole sim. Can't wait to see what next. Alright, server, it's your turn. Let's go for a walk. Before you returned from hell, you had never stopped to consider the ebb and flow of simple bathroom economics. While dividing one space between ten people may be only mildly inconvenient at the best of times, early mornings have a habit of spawning an impromptu conga line if individuals dead sit on a nice warm shower. 
Standing in line for an umpteenth time, you idly consider the potential legality of using the outside hose to clean yourself off. What do you think she's up to? No good, I bet. That's why she would strike while we had the element of surprise. I don't care what Lucifer says. Something's off about this scenario. We can't quite put your finger on it. Ignoring it for the moment, you interject. Service, you aren't by any chance planning to take out the garbage collector, are you? Both of her bodies turn to face you. The thing clawing in the back of your mind snaps into place. Both of her bodies. The third one is nowhere to be seen. Ooh, we'd love to get our hands on her. Always taking away what's rightfully ours. Why, we've half a mind too. Hold up. Suddenly both her heads swivel, staring intently over the left shoulders at the wall behind her. Whatever she's looking at, she doesn't shift her gaze from it for a full minute. When she turns back to you, she smiles back to her normal self again. What was that about? Nothing. Don't worry about it, you got everything under control. Service shots past you, heading back to her room. Hmm, I wonder what that was about. She's been acting out of sorts for a while now. You turn to see Melina, bleary eyed, and looking like she's not quite finished with her early morning hangover, you emerge from the bathroom. Not that it's ever really easy to keep a conversation going with her, mind you. An idea where her third body is? Melina lets on a sigh. She set up camp in the living room. She even unplugged the television to get a better access to the window. Camp? What do you mean? She playing some kind of game? I'm not really sure I can do her paranoid lunacy justice. You should really just ask her yourself. I'll get on that. After your morning shower, get downstairs to investigate the claims made by a sour demon. Sitting in a collapsible chair, a service's third body is glued to the living room window, scanning the neighborhood with a pair of binoculars. She doesn't react as you enter the room, remaining focused on observation with steadfast determination. Melina says you've been down here for a while. What are you doing? Keeping watch. What floor? Cerberus scowls, as though the answer to your question should be self-evident. Trouble. Synchronized what steps behind you, Harold's arrival Cerberus' other bodies accompanied by Melina. Jigs up, service, I want my television back. Go ahead and tell Tigger about this crazy theory of yours. The body and body window stands and is quickly joined by her other bodies, presenting an united front. We're pretty sure that we're being spied on. We've been picking up a peculiar scent around the borders of the house. I wasn't there last week. And if we aren't mistaken, is that punk mugger from the park. You mean that one you chased off? Oh, she return? Cause she's definitely plotting revenge. Against us whooping your butt back at the park. It's only a matter of time before she strikes. We can't afford her schemes. How do you know? Have you, ever met, have you ever met her before? Well, no. But there's something about them that just rubs us up the wrong way. We can't really explain it, but we just know she's up to no good. So, we're keeping watch for any sign of her. And we're gonna teach her a lesson if we see her again. This rampant paranoia is certainly out of sorts for Cerberus. You look over to Melina, who corkscrews her finger beside her head, not verbally cluing you in on her own personal opinion of Cerberus's mental state. Well, there's only one thing for it then. Let's go find her. What? What? If it's causing you that much worry, why don't we go and address the source of the problem? Ah, count me on this adventure. Urban exploration doesn't really fit my aesthetic. Besides, if I want to get shanked, I do it in the comfort of my own house. Thank you very much. As you put on your shoes, Molina pulls you aside. Can't be serious about doing this. And why not? If it snaps Cerberus back to normal, what could be the harm in indulging her a little? Cerberus is... she's... 
she's not the same as the rest of us. She can get focused scary even when she's on the warpath. Just don't get in between her and whomever she's hunting. If it comes to blow, she'll literally go right through you to get to her quarry. I'll keep that in mind, but hopefully we can resolve this peacefully. Waving goodbye to Mayla, you and Cerberus take to the streets. It is long before one of her buys picks up the scent of the wolf warrior, and she gradually leads you further and further away from home. The nose of Cerberus leads you through decrepit, decrepit buildings, abandoned parking garages, and their stores back with the unwanted de detritus of generations. Eventually, service halls outside a rundown nightclub, as well as plaza with faded posters advertising indie bands long since lost the sand of time. Sniffing the air, she leads you down a tight side street and onto a sparsely populated plaza. Hmm, trail gets confusing here. We can't make out the scent clearly past here. Too many people. She wrinkles her nose. And way, way too many spray on deodorant. So, is this it then? If we can't find her, what do we do? Oh no, I'm sure she's around here somewhere. We're gonna keep looking. A cheer goes up from the nearby throng of people. Cluster around an obscured object. Intrigued, you and service move closer to investigate. There, at the center of the motley crowd, the stranger holds court from behind a cheap card table. Step on up, place a wager, win the prize, only valuables, no organs, invoices, or IOUs if you please. A ruddy faced tourist slaps a handful of crumpled bills on the table, a gesture reciprocated by a stranger who has her own considerably large stack of cash to the pot. Now, the rules are simple. It's so easy when a child can win, just keep your eyes on this here bead. I'm familiar with this game, she'll need the bead around and be in the cups or shells, but she'll secretly swap the bead beneath between shells that the other player can't see. The strange goal suffices from Cerberus' eyes, and her normally playful tone sharpens to razor edge. I know how this works. She's about to cheat. Watch carefully. There. Whatever happens is too fast for you to pick out a distance. But Cerberus watches the game progress with rapt focus. She's removed the beat entirely. There's no way for her to opponents to win the game. The two of you observe the stranger win game at the game, cheating the tourists and other passers by out of everything remotely valuable they might have. With every valuable loss to figure, Cerberus's gaze darkens. Not fair. You lie and steal from the other demons all the time. Why do you care about one mortal doing it to another? Besides, aren't you in the favor of the widespread corruption of humanity? Cerberus shakes her head like a horse trying to dissuade a persistent and irritating fly. I, yes, but something's wrong. Just looking at her is making our hackles stand up. We have to get to the bottom of this. Even the means is taking her down going to catch her, we need some kind of plan. She's obviously a dead there running scams, so I'll bet she already has an escape route planned. I know, we'll split up. I can cover three times the ground that you can. How do I communicate or call you? That's easy, just whistle. In hindsight, that seems obvious. Alright, you're going first, I'll tell behind. She might just let her guard down if she believes you're acting alone. Service nods. Alright, on three, ready. I just signaled the hound to the hell charge forward, streaking towards the stranger like many bolts of lightning. Immediately, the stranger's head swivels around, seeing three demons bearing down on them. The stranger curses, hurling card table at the approaching service in an attempt to slow her down. The cloak figure darts down a nearby alleyway. Thinking quickly, you dash into an alleyway parallel to that of the stranger's. Utilizing your lengthy stride, you make the street in no time at all. Turn left and sprint the last block, placing yourself at the exit to alleyway the stranger escaped through. Arms wide, you brace your impact. But no one's there. As you look around in confusion, you notice a single dark aperture in the grimy wall. A scuffling sound heralds the arrival of Cerberus, 
one of her eyes sprinting towards you from the far end of the alley. We lost her. Did you see where she went? I have my suspicions. My suspicions. He points a dark hole in the wall. It looks a bit. It's an entryway into a condemned building taking a large portion of the block. I'll go in after her. You keep her perimeter in case she tries to run again. Alright, be careful. The interior of the building is dank and musty. From what little you can make out of gloom, it was most likely a warehouse at some point in the distant past. He moves silently through the rundown building, eyes peeled for any sign of black cloak, a largely futile effort against darkness. The only source of light throughout the building comes from a board at windows. Their barricades meant to keep the out people, not more so light. I don't care if you... I need... With the sound of voice, you flatten yourself to the wall, peering around the corner. You can just make out the telltale glimmer of the cell phone against the blackness. Straining your ears, you can barely make out what the stranger is saying. I think I'm getting them to slip. I don't know how long it'll last. That damn much knows will find me, but I don't get help soon. Send Bell over now or I'll swear I'll- The phone dims as the line drops. Leaving the stranger alone in the dark, as she mars a vitriolic string of curses, you begin to take slow, careful steps toward her. Picking your way over the dist- Ugh. Oh, let's try it again. Picking your way over the detritus carefully, you close the distance. Nearing your target, you break into a run. The stranger turns around to sudden sound, but it's too late to do anything as you tackle her and send both of you tumbling to the ground. You grapple with her a moment and manage to grab her wrist as she pulls her knife on you, halting its trajectory. The stranger rides with a landing eel, desperately twisting and trying to escape your grip. Your hold remains firm, however, and despite the ferocity of her initial attempts to be free herself, the struggles of the stranger soon diminish to the occasional token wiggle. You and I have an account to settle. Oh, let me guess. You want your wedding ring back. No, 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 wait. I must have taken your visa a while back. Mm -hmm. Guess again. Mm -hmm. Did you meet with the car last week? I'll admit, I may have played up the game lame like a bit. But it's all fine now. What did it say you just let bygones be bygones, eh? I know you've been snooping around my house. Whatever you're after, I guarantee it's not worth the trouble. Ah. Now I remember, you're that gorilla I tried to mug in the park. Not my finest work, I'll admit. But it's been a slow day. Don't try to change the subject. Why are you spying on us? I haven't the faintest idea what you're on about. You can't play dumb with me. I know we've been watching your house for the past few days. I guess there's no point in reasoning with a crazy person. What if I gave you something nice, huh? I catch you in some sweet bling and you let me mosey on out of here before the hellhound shows up. The stranger rummages and Cyrus leave, pulls out several gold trim tickets from the folds of fabric. You'll love these. You're big music fans, right? These are special backstage passes for underground sensation Satanas. Never heard of her. Do you live on a rock or something? Satanas is the hottest thing since sliced bread. She's the underground sensation that's... At, um, that will very soon be taking the nation. She has to be a charlatan like you to promote her. I won't count her being a breakout hit. Go and check her out yourself if you don't believe me. You let me go and I can give you these. I can give you a sweet deal on these little darlings. She bobs the tickets up and down enticingly. I don't think so. After I call servers in to satisfy curiosity, I'm going to make sure you're turned into proper authorities. Wait, turn me in? Yeah. Isn't that what you typically do with cheese and swindlers? Well, hey now, let's not be hasty. Do you have an idea who exactly you're dealing with? Who I even am? You don't have a clue, don't you? Well, you may have that hellhound running at your beck and call. Well, have you know I'm bosom buddies of the queen and the underworld herself. Excuse me? Your surprise slackens your grip on the stranger just enough for her to act. Shedding your cloak like a second skin, the stranger barrels for open doorway. 
She wants you to catch a glimpse of what hair and are those horns? I think you advise you to stick your fingers in her mouth and whistle a sharp, shrill blast. The stranger makes it about five feet from the doorway until the alleyway beyond before Cerberus rams into her like some sort of intercontinental scam seeking missile. The force of the charge sends the two white haired figures tumbling in the shadows of the alleyway. Cerberus' other two bodies around the corner of the alleyway, closing the distance. Between the three of her, Cerberus quickly pins the stranger to the alley wall, one by restraining each of the stranger's arms. Wait, Cerberus, she's a demon as well. Cerberus' lips curled back from her pointed teeth as she growls at her retort. Obviously. Cerberus returns her attention back to her strange stranger. You got a lot of nerves showing your face in this town again after sending you packing last time. It's in my nature. I am, like you, a creature of habit. You don't know anything about us. More than perhaps you like, you might. Tell me, does your mistress let you sit at the table with the real demons yet? Or do you have to resort to begging for scraps from your elders and betters? Cerberus' knuckles go white, but her voice remains eerily calm as she looms over the stranger. You know, I don't even know what happens to you if you die in this world. But what do you say? We found out together. Cerberus, that's enough. We still don't know. In unison, all three had snap around to you. They have full fire, kindling in their eyes. Back up, mortal. I'll not have you right infringing upon my duty. Teeth bare, the body not currently holding a stranger leans down towards the exposed throat. The stranger knows her attempts to escape, her low voice raising an octave as she protests. Oh, let's not get so hasty with this old executing the suspect shtick. Take it good with mutt. Am I really the person you want to be killing? Cerberus suddenly halts a descent, gives the stranger an experimental sniff. It's wrong. Wrong? What's wrong? Out three Cerberus' bodies dip their heads, telling he's sniffing the stranger pen beneath them. Confused Cerberus looks back at you. Her scent. It's not right. She's not the scent you picked up outside the house? Not quite. It's some familiar sounds, but it's definitely not hers. Huh. Like I jeopardized my safety by messing around with you lunatics. You actually think I'd go anywhere near your house after last time? Through you ain't got enough common sense to fill an egg cup. You're talking like a lot of trash with someone who doesn't want their throat torn out. Who's in danger of having her throat torn out? Because you missed a memo, King Kong. I the undesirable your canine unit is after. You know what that means? It means I haven't broken our little agreement, and your attack dog doesn't have license to harm me. Cerberus's eyes widen, and she slowly begins to shift her weight off the stranger. What is this? Something's moving us. What did you do to us? The stranger laughs in response. <laughs> What did I do? I'm not the one acting out line here, Cujo. Despite her best efforts, the invisible power of voicing service off the stranger who's too much to resist, and all three of her bodies are flung away from the stranger at high speeds. Crashing into nearby wall, service slides unmoving to the ground. Standing, the stranger dusts herself off. How did you... That's my secret. But maybe think next time before you jump an innocent woman. Innocence pushing it. Just who are you anyway? No one of consequence. Not right now, in any case. You make sure to keep that mutt on a tighter leash in the future, or you'll regret it. Hands in her pockets, the stranger sets off down the alleyway. Wait. How there are more demons on Earth? I don't understand. Turning on her heel, the stranger casts a final disparaging comment back at you. Darling, what you ain't aware of could fill several libraries. 
ask your queen if you're so desperate to stick your nose into places you shouldn't. With that, the stranger departs, leaving you to tend to service in the darkening alleyway. As you kneel down by her unmoving form, a slight whisper escapes her lips. Are you alright? B. E. Cerberus? E. E. Her voices are so faint, you had to tend Ben down to hear them. I'm right here. What do you need? Evenge! Out there, revised spring up, milling about you, each one offering a hundred different implausible schemes to get even with the stranger. Break her hands! Skin her alive! Chop off her nose! Hang her from her tail! Stuff her horns down her throat! Well, let me know if you need any help with your vengeance. I got some investigating of my own to do. Eh, hey, what do you mean? What kind of investigation? I think we're long overdue for a chat with Lucifer. She's been keeping far too many things from us. Welcome to. We have a couple of questions of our own to ask our benevolent queen. Well, things certainly have gotten a little spicy and violent. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment who your favorite demon girl is. And if, if you want to try this out for yourselves, links will be provided down below in the comments and description. Anyways, thank you. And take care.